Hello, hello, and welcome back to Inspirations, where you can find encouragement to inspire a life. This is Dana Susan Beasley of AngelArts.biz, and this week I'm doing things a bit differently because it is Holy Week. So, before I get started, though, if you would like to get my complete Falling in Love with the Bridegroom devotional that I've been going over this last month or so, if you'd like to get that for free, then check the link in the description below. This devotional will teach you how to have quiet times and give you ample scriptures to spend in devoted study to our Lord. Now let's get to today's devotional. Dear Lord, help us in this time to understand your heart for us and to love you with all our heart, soul, and minds. In your precious name I pray. Amen. All right, so as I've explained before, since it's Holy Week, I am going to be going through the scriptures from that time period in Jesus' life. And I thought today that I'd even do something a little more different and talk about the parable of the two sons. So up until this time, of course, on Sunday, Jesus was had the triumphal entry where he came into into Jerusalem on the donkey. And then I'm not clear on exactly all the time frame. I don't think anybody really knows, but Jesus cleared the temple. There was a fir, a fig tree that he cursed and it withered. And there's a lesson there. And then the, the leaders tried to question Jesus's authority and he, completely stumped them. I love that story. And now also I'm going to talk about the parable of the two sons. All right, so I'm reading from, and i got to get my glasses on, I forgot. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 through 32. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. But what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he regretted it and went. Then he came to the second and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said to him, The first. Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you, for John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but tax collectors and harlots believed him, and when you saw it, you did not afterward relent and believe him. So what can we learn from that about Jesus? Well, he loves sinners. He, (laughs) what matters is that a sinner repents. And it also reminds me of the parable where, you know, the Pharisee is, I'm going to take my glasses off. The Pharisees are are, uh, praying. One Pharisee is praying and saying, oh, I'm glad I'm not like them, these sinners. I'm so glad I'm not like them. And then the, the sinner is beating his chest going, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy, Lord. You know, God embraces the humble and the broken, and he goes after those who are lost. I mean, Jesus talks about the parable of the good shepherd who who leaves the 99 to go after the one. And so, it's very important that we, as believers, remember <laughs> that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I don't know about you, but but I can relate to to the tax collector and and the other sinners because I was a rebel in high school and part of college. I had turned my back on God for a number of years and by his grace he brought me back. So so I can relate to Mary Magdalene and 
and you know those who had turned their backs on Jesus because I did that and he took me back in open arms and and those who who are I'm trying to come up with words those who are putting burdens on people of religiosity and churchianity and rules and legalism those he actually wasn't very kind to <laughs> you know he he wasn't Jesus when he was on earth he wasn't uh, this mamby pamby um I love everybody kind of dude. He he really did go after mainly the religious leaders. So, again, it's very important that we remember that and that when we encounter somebody that is broken, that has broken specifically the laws of God, we we embrace them with with the type of love that Jesus led them with. Hold on, I gotta take a sip of water. That's who Jesus died for. That's who he spent time with. He had dinners and lunches with tax collectors and prostitutes would come and and anoint him with their hair. and Just so many stories of that. I watched this incredible movie tonight on Pure Flix. It was called Do You Believe? And it was with Ted McGinley and Lee Majors was in it. Sybil Shepherd. Wow. It was such a cast. It was so good. It was all about how all these people intertwined in this one hospital and how God used their circumstances to bring them to himself. It was so incredibly good. I highly recommend this movie. It was called What You Believe. It's so good. So main point is remember Jesus loves the sinner. He loves you and he loves those who are far from him and we have the great honor of being his hands and feet on this earth. So think about how you can do that this Holy Week and beyond. All right, I'm going to say a prayer and then I will end the devotional. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died for us while we were still sinners, that we all have turned astray. All of us have fallen short, but it's because of your grace. For by grace we have been saved through faith and not by ourselves. It is your grace, Lord, and I thank you. And I pray that you would help us to humble ourselves under your mighty hand and be thankful for your deliverance and that you would use us in your great, wonderful masterpiece of redeeming the world. Because you also said, For God to love the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that no one would perish So, Lord, we just lift this up to you. Help us to center ourselves during this Holy Week. I know that life goes on and and there's business to do. There's work to do. In many cases, there's school. There's family events and all of that. So, But just help us through this week to center ourselves on you and worship you. And I pray all this in your precious name. Amen. All right. So that's all for the devotional. Would you like to go deeper into the scriptures? You can find out more about my Becoming God's Bride Bible study by checking in the description box below. And now this this Bible study is not what I call a crank the blank. It will teach you how to study the Bible for yourself. And it's going to help you become closer to Christ and help you navigate the relationships that you have on this side of heaven. Okay, so with that, I'm going to leave you with my favorite blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This is Dana Susan Beasley of angelarts.biz. Together, may we reach new heights in our lives and beyond. <music>